Now, it's been a rocky start to the year for the share market, but what about the local economy? For more, I'm joined by City Senior Economist Josh Williamson. Thanks for joining us, Josh. So you've just put out a new paper. What do you see are the biggest challenges facing the Australian economy this year? Well, for one, we see further falls in business investment, particularly mining investment, and they could actually work to shave around one half to three quarters of one percentage point off of growth. That's factored into our forecast. Um, on the positive side, though, we think that residential investment, um, residential construction, will actually be a little bit stronger than expected. So it's a little bit of an offset there. But the global markets have been giving us a reminder of the risks that are out there, particularly amongst our major trading partners. So that's something we see as a downside risk for Australian growth this year, is the fact that there are some concerns over emerging markets. And we think that some of the weakness that we've seen in markets, uh, particularly in China, are a reflection of just some of the concerns that uh, investors have and indeed central bankers also have around the performance of the old economy there in China. So what happens to Australia if there's a hard landing in China? Well this, this, this would be the worst scenario for Australia. Um, Citibank's done some, some modelling uh, on this and we estimate that for advanced economies you're looking at around about a half a percentage point reduction to advanced economy growth. Now, that would be, it would be more than that for Australia because we are a, a commodity exporter more than many other advanced economies and we have deeper linkages to China and also to other markets that are, that are also allied with China. So the likelihood is that you know, a hard landing for China would mean a, a likely harder landing for Australia. Thankfully though, we do have you know, further monetary policy to call on if that's required and the exchange rate would like you to appreciate further again and that would add something of a shock absorber to help with that particular shock. But there's no doubting that a hard landing in China would certainly see slower growth in Australia. And you think there's also a risk for the Australian housing market that could be forced sales if there's less demand from Chinese buyers? Well, well certainly the, the, the foreign buyers and Chinese buyers have been in the headlines over the last 12 months to two years that there was a hard landing in China to the extent that it actually dented investment appetite and risk appetite for assets and that includes property assets that could actually hurt Australia's property market as well at a time when we are seeing domestic investors start to curtail some of their growth because of uh, APRA's regulations around the housing markets and what APRA has been doing to actually slow growth in the investor segment in Australia. Now, does Australia really face a dilemma in 2016? Investment outside of mining is still modest, yet mining investment has fallen off a cliff. That's probably one of the other risks is that you know, we see non-mining investment in things like plant machinery and equipment being a little bit weaker for longer, probably a little bit weaker for longer than the Reserve Bank actually expects. So the risk is that the drag from overall investment probably remains uh, weaker for longer. But as I said earlier, we have residential investment actually uh, picking up quite strongly again this year. That will provide some offset. Uh, the, re the big sort of X factor for, for us this year is what happens to consumer expenditure. Whether the really good leads that we've had from early reports about Christmas retail sales extend into the first half of this year. Certainly, if the labour force data is, is to, be, to be believed, that employment growth has been nothing short of spectacular, and that should actually help to support maybe a pickup in consumer expenditure. That that does tend to have a bit more of a multiplier effect on actual overall economic growth than say something like the housing market, merely from the fact that consumption is just a larger proportion of the economy. But at the same time, households could remain very cautious. There's not a lot of, not a lot of scope there for households to actually increase borrowing or leverage, as it were, to actually help spending uh, going forward, particularly at a time when we know that income growth is quite slow. Well, the latest employment figures are out on Thursday. Do you think the unemployment rate has peaked? Um, I don't think the unemployment rate has, has peaked. We are looking for a move back to 5.9% from the current 5.8% to one decimal point. The risk is, of course, that we've had such strong growth over the last few months, and there still are a few niggling concerns around sort of you know, the accuracy of those point estimates, or whether we do see some actual payback uh, for the data that's for, for December which is coming out this Thursday. So, you know, the risk is that uh, the unemployment rate probably peaks up, picks up a little bit. If that's the case, that will probably add to some of the worries that we're seeing to investors from uh, offshore moves. Okay, Josh Williamson from City, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Sue.